Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Benchtop Power Supplies. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to DC benchtop power supplies, and we'll also explain both basic and advanced features found in many modern benchtop power supplies. Most electronics are powered by DC or direct current, and therefore a DC power source or supply is required for almost all design, testing, and debugging of modern electronics. Although it's possible to use a fixed, non-configurable source of DC power, so-called benchtop or bench power supplies are normally used for this purpose. There are many different models and configurations of benchtop power supplies, but there are some common requirements for almost any type of supply. The first is a variable high-precision output. Typically, the maximum voltages are up to about 30 volts, and maximum currents are about up to 10 amps, but there are many applications where lower maximum voltages and currents are sufficient. The quality of the supply output is also very important. Undesired variation in the form of noise and ripple should be kept as low as possible. Recovery time, or how quickly the output returns to a stable value after a sudden change, is also a common specification. Many supplies also have multiple channels, which can be used independently or combined, something we'll come back to later in this presentation. And finally, modern power supplies often have additional advanced functions, and we'll cover some of these in detail as well. The most basic specifications of a power supply are the maximum output voltage, the maximum output current, and the maximum output power. These are usually specified per channel. For example, this channel has a max voltage of 30 volts, a max current of 10 amps, and a maximum power of 160 watts. It's important to note that the max power is less than the max voltage times max current. Here, the maximum channel power output is 160 watts and not 300 watts. The combinations of voltage and current supported by a power supply are often shown using a derating curve. On the right is an example of a typical derating curve for a supply with a maximum current of 10 amps, maximum voltage of 30 volts, and a maximum power of 160 watts. Any combination of voltage or current that falls on or below this curve, that is in the colored area, is supported by the supply. Note that the curved region is bounded by something called the maximum power output curve. As the name implies, all points, that is voltage and current combinations, that lie along this curve will yield the maximum output power, here 160 watts. Derating curves are normally included in the power supply specifications or manual, or can be found on the manufacturer's website. Now that we've covered specifications, we'll move on to how we configure or enter the desired voltage and current. The user of a benchtop power supply configures two things, the desired output voltage and the output current limit. We don't specify the output current itself because this is a function of the load resistance. We'll come back to this distinction in a few minutes. An output power is simply output voltage times output current. The supply output voltage is usually kept constant, but in some cases the output voltage may be dynamically changed or varied. The three most common ways in which this is done are as a ramp, an arbitrary sequence, and using an external source. As the name implies, a ramp is a continuous rise or ramping up in the output voltage. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a user-defined ramp or ramping time, after which the voltage remains constant. Unlike ramp, which linearly increases the voltage from zero to a defined value, an arbitrary sequence switches the power supply between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. These levels each have user-defined values and durations, and the sequence may be repeated multiple times. These sequences are sometimes defined directly on the power supply itself, but are often loaded into the supply by means of an externally created file. On some supplies, it's also possible to control the channel output using an external input voltage. This analog or modulation input is fed into the supply using a separate connector. The output voltage, or sometimes the output current limit, is controlled or regulated by this analog input. As shown here, this can be used to create modulated output voltage waveforms, such as the sine wave shown here. Regardless of the output type, many power supplies will show two values for voltage and current. 
The first set of values are the values entered by the user. The second set of values are the measured or sensed values of what the supply is currently outputting. This function is often called readback. In normal operation, the readback voltage values should be fairly close to the configured value, although later in this presentation, we'll discuss when this might not be the case. The current readback value will depend on the load resistance, since it's the load resistance that determines how much current is being drawn from the supply. Again, it's important to remember that the current value entered by a user is an upper limit or max value. It doesn't force the supply to output a given current. In addition to simply displaying the values, readback is also used in three other areas, namely remote sense, protection functions, and in determining constant voltage or constant current mode. Let's start by looking at remote sense. When a benchtop power supply user enters a voltage, they often are entering the voltage they want to be present at the load. For example, if we wanted 5 volts across our load, we would connect it to our power supply leads and configure the supply to output 5 volts. However, the power supply lead cables will reduce the voltage seen by the load because these leads have a non-zero resistance. This resistance increases as the leads become longer and or thinner. In many cases, lead resistance and the resulting voltage drop can be safely ignored, but this decrease in voltage can become significant when working with higher currents or smaller load resistances. The most common solution to this problem is to enable a supply to measure the output voltage at the load instead of at the output terminals, and this methodology is called remote sense. In remote sense, an additional set of so-called sense leads are used to measure the voltage as close as possible to the load. These leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, meaning that almost no current flows and therefore there is almost no voltage drop in these sense leads. Using the remotely sensed voltage, the supply can then adjust its output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. Here, the supply compensated for the 0.3 volt drop by increasing output voltage to 5.3 volts. Note that this is an automatic slash dynamic process. Once the sense leads have been connected and remote sense has been enabled, the power supply will automatically and continuously adjust the output voltage as needed. In addition to remote sense, readback is also needed to implement so-called protection functions. These are designed to protect the load from excessive voltage or overvoltage, from excessive current or overcurrent, and from excessive power or overpower. You may also hear overcurrent protection referred to as an electronic fuse. All three of these functions do the same thing. That is, they disable the supply output when a threshold is exceeded. Often there's also some kind of visual and or audible indication when protection is activated. In most cases, the supply output must then be manually restarted. Protection functions are normally configured and enabled or disabled on a per-channel basis, although overcurrent protection may be linked to other channels. That is, if one channel's electronic fuse is tripped, all of the channels linked to it are also disabled. And, overcurrent protection may also have a delay at startup to avoid having the output disabled due to high, but short duration, in rush currents. And finally, the supply itself may have an over-temperature protection function that shuts the supply down if the supply's internal temperature becomes too high. The third main use of readback is related to something called constant voltage and constant current modes. Recall that the user of a benchtop DC power supply normally starts by configuring the output voltage, and in most cases, the supply operates in so-called constant voltage mode because the supply delivers the same, or a constant voltage, regardless of the attached load. Recall also that the output current in this case is determined by the resistance of the attached load as per Ohm's law. It's not directly configured or specified by the user. When the user enters a value for current, this value sets the maximum allowable output current. Excessively and or unexpectedly high current can occur when load resistance decreases. Since high current often can damage or destroy a load, it's important to find a way to prevent the situation from occurring. There are two main ways that power supplies do this. The first is something we just discussed a few moments ago. The supply disables or switches off the output if the readback value indicates the current threshold is being exceeded. Although turning off the output does protect the load, 
completely shutting off the power is sometimes undesirable. Another way to avoid the problem of excessive current is to reduce the voltage such that the current falls below the threshold, and this mode of operation is called constant current mode. Remember that as long as the current being drawn by the load is below the configured threshold, here 300 milliamps, the supply operates in constant voltage mode. As we just mentioned, constant current mode keeps the output current below the threshold or maximum value by reducing the output voltage. Here, voltage was automatically lowered to ensure that the current stays below the 300 milliamp threshold. In many cases, the power supply will produce some type of visual indication when it enters constant current mode, such as changing the display color, displaying a CC icon, illuminating in LED, etc. And again, it's important to remember that constant current mode is entered and exited based on the readback current value. It's not a button or setting that can be toggled by the user. Now let's look at a few more advanced topics with regards to modern power supplies. These include series and parallel operation, electronic load, and battery simulation. We'll only cover these briefly in this presentation, so please see the separate presentations on these topics if you'd like a more detailed explanation. Many DC benchtop power supplies have multiple channels, and in most cases, these channels are used independently to provide power to separate devices or loads. That said, it's often possible to combine the outputs of multiple power supply channels. Combining channels can be used to increase the output voltage, or current, beyond that which can be provided by a single channel. There are two ways power supply channels can be combined. If the channels are connected in series, this enables higher voltages. On the other hand, if the channels are connected in parallel, this enables higher currents. These connections are typically made externally, although in some cases, the connections may be made within the supply itself. Let's look at an example of series operation, which combines channels in order to produce higher voltages. We'll start by configuring each of our four channels to output 25 volts, and then connect them in series. The result is a combined output voltage of 100 volts. Note that the channels don't all have to be the same voltage. We could also use this combination of different voltage settings to obtain the same 100 volts combined output. Now let's look at parallel operation, which is used to produce higher currents. In this example, our channels are set to 2 volts, but each channel can only source up to 10 amps. Combining these channels in parallel means that we still have only 2 volts across the load, but the combined channels can now deliver up to 40 amps through the load. The next topic we're going to cover is electronic loads, sometimes also referred to as sync mode. In normal operation, a power supply acts as a source, that is, current flows out of the supply and is delivered to a load. Some power supplies can also operate in sync mode, where current flows into the supply. This can be very useful when designing, testing, or debugging sources of power, such as power supplies, battery chargers, etc. When operating any type of electronic load, it's important to observe the maximum values for sinking power. All loads have a limit as to how much power they can safely sink and dissipate. Exceeding these maximum values can result in overheating or damage to a supply. Although sync mode can be used to test batteries, some power supplies support simulating a battery with user-defined parameters. The simulated battery then discharges or charges depending on the load or voltage present at the power supply terminals. In order to do this realistically, a battery model is required. This model defines the parameters of the battery at different states of charge. This is important because all batteries behave differently at different states of charge. For example, the battery's internal resistance and the terminal voltage without and with a load attached will be different for a fully charged battery versus a battery at 50% capacity. One advantage, therefore, of simulating batteries is the state of charge can be instantaneously changed. There's no need to wait for the battery to normally charge or discharge to the desired level. Let's summarize what we've covered in this presentation. Benchtop DC power supplies are widely used in the design, test, and debugging of almost all electronic devices. The key specifications for any power supply are the number of channels 
and the maximum output voltage, current, and power. It's also important to choose a supply with a clean, high-quality output and good precision slash accuracy. In most cases, the output of a power supply is constant, but many supplies support ways to generate a variable output, such as ramp and arbitrary waveforms. Readback shows the measured output values and also enables functions such as remote sense, the different protection types, and switching between constant voltage and constant current modes. And finally, additional functions found in some power supplies include series and parallel operation, the ability to function as an electronic load, and battery simulation. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Benchtop Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about DC Benchtop Power Supplies, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.